Hey everyone, this week I thought we'd check in with the state of the US election, where battleground states like Ohio look set to see more drama than when they filmed the Shawshank Redemption there, and just like the end of that film we're all going to have to travel for a lot of proverbial to reach the end of it. This week saw third party candidate RF Kennedy drop out of the race, urging his supporters to vote for Trump, and it certainly is very brave for President Trump to invite a Kennedy along to the campaign given he's already at risk of assassination attempts. Elsewhere, Kamala Harris was officially crowned the Democratic Party's candidate, and this of course is the party that claims to be the only one that wants to save democracy, and they're doing so by ignoring the primary voters and forcing Biden out, choosing the party candidate without asking the members to vote on her, launching court cases to prevent RFK running as a third party candidate in swing states, and four, then launching battles to keep him on the ballot now that they realise that running him will benefit them. I'd use that expression about destroying the village to save the village, but at this point there's not really much left to destroy. All they have to do is make sure that CNN shows some stock footage and warns people that Donald Trump might bring back the nasty working class jobs to the village. But anyway, this election will largely be decided by a handful of battleground states, so how are things playing out there? Well, first to Arizona, which is a remarkably tight race this time around and one of the few where swapping Biden to Harris actually played to the Democrats' benefit. You can make up some metaphor about Biden being a cowboy riding off into the Arizona sunset. Although this was more like some kind of nasty gunfight where a posse of bad actors rode into town and shot the sheriff. Elsewhere in the sun, Nevada looks on pace to hand Trump the state by a good 5%, especially with his policy of eliminating tax on tips and thus telling the IRS that what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Wisconsin, that's an interesting one with polling showing that Harris is up 1%, despite Trump also outperforming performing his 2020 standing. It's almost as if the polls are dubious. Michigan is probably going to remain blue. That's the party colour and also the frigid temperatures is November. Although on the other hand, it has a large Muslim population and thus questions raised about whether Kamala will carefully handle issues like the LGBT community or Israel-Palestine, or whether we can expect some kind of gaffe that is undoubtedly as hilarious as it is horrendous and tragic. Possibly something like a press conference where she claims that the West Bank is on Wall Street or that the ruler of Jordan is Michael Jordan. George, on the other hand, will probably flip red. Trump only lost it by 0.2% last time and every poll since has shown his support growing. And Pennsylvania is also one that might be out of play at this point. Kamala was expected to pick the state governor for VP and win it by a landslide, but then changed her mind at the last minute and it's a snub that hasn't gone down particularly well. Also adding the fact that it's a state where RFK had far more votes that will now all go to former President Trump's direction. And it will thus likely be a decision that the Democrats end up regretting, although it's also worth looking up the allegations that Governor Shapiro, the one he didn't pick, covered up a murder several years ago and maybe they didn't shoot themselves in the foot. Although to this day Shapiro claims that Ellen Greenberg's 20 stab wounds were the result of a suicide and it definitely doesn't need re-examining just like the allegations of voter fraud and election rigging then. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, please subscribe. Bye.